Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. This will assist you in your daily walk with Christ and getting to know cross Christ better and understand them. And putting your cross on, you know, read you some words every morning. It doesn't take long. You know, if you got to get up earlier to serve Christ better, do it. You know, we live in a society that's hurry, hurry, hurry. Stay up late. Set your clock late. Wake up, brush. Set you some time aside to get to know Christ better throughout your day. No matter what time, you go use the bathroom, whatever. Make some time for Christ. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I've been talking about perfection in Christ, and I'm going to continue on with this. How to become a better Christian. How to become a better follower of Christ. I'm going to start with Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, which you shall eat, or which you shall drink. Know yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. But your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more than they? Which of you, which of you by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? What he said, you can't speak nothing into to existence. You can't think nothing to existence. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they not tall or not, neither do they spin. You did I say unto you that even Solomon and all his glory was not arrayed like one of these? Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow to cast into the oven, so he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, have faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with our shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient today is the evil thereof. Hmm. You can't beat that. Now I touched base on that yesterday a little bit about worrying about clothes and food and things like that. That's why I say that Jesus taught us how to pray. The Lord's prayer cover everything. He said he know what you need of. He said the Gentiles seek after this. Now go back to uh, the days of Moses, right? When it was in the wilderness and the people just complained and complained about food. Simple things. They murmured and they lusted in the wilderness. Did they lust after sexual sin? Did they lust after fornication? They lusted for food. <laughs> they lusted. They, they brought, uh, brought God to anger over just complaining about water and food. And he was going to provide for them. All they had to do was be patient, have faith. He said, let's do the same thing. Don't worry about food. Don't worry about clothes. Don't worry about none of those things. You understand? He said, I take care of the birds. They don't reap or sow. He said, look at them flowers. Looking all fancy and stuff. And Solomon and all his glory wasn't arrayed like one of these. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Wow, sufficient of the day is the, thing, the evil thereof. So he's telling you today, think about the Lord's Prayer, how it lines up with it. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Sufficient of today is the evil thereof. You see how the, the, the word of God is so perfect and it's so good for you. Basically, God telling you not to even ask for food. Don't even ask for clothes. Seek first heavenly things, and all else will be added to you. So your prayer life couldn't shouldn't consist of what the people tell you, the majority of people these days tell you to do. Hey, you want that new car? Pray for it. You want that new house? Pray for it. <laughs> you want that, that Xbox Series 1, X, or whatever? Pray for it. You want that PlayStation 5? Pray for it. Some of the people that got the PlayStation 5, and they had to return it, and pay three hundred dollars to get it fixed. He said he know what you need before you ask of it. But he said, seek 
first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added to you. Your prayer life shouldn't consist of abundance and riches. I'm sure you're going to pray for some, but he's trying to tell you how to pray. He's trying to tell you how not to pray. He's trying to tell you what to worry about and what not to worry about. If you trust in God, basically, think about this. Basically, Jesus is telling you, when you work for me, and you follow after me, don't worry about yourself. I got you. You just worry about the things that's important to my kingdom. Help it another. I only got five dollars in my pocket, and this person's begging. Give it to him. Right? Because if you trust in God to provide for you, he's gonna provide for you. He said, whatever you do in secret, I reward you openly for. You'll be surprised how many blessings you have received in your life because you did what the Lord requires of you according to his word without even knowing it. Do you understand? How many things have you received? I can give you testimony right now. Should I? Yes. Let me give you some testimony. When God tells you not to worry. I told this testimony before, I'm going to tell it again. And it's going to cover everything that God has talked about right there. <laughs> Clothing. Food. Why worry about those things? A few years ago, I met my wife, Michelle. And I proposed to her. And I remember we was talking to somebody. It was like, hey, did y'all make preparations? Did you? Did you go meet up with somebody about a wedding dress? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I used to always say, and I used to always tell my wife, I'm not worried about that. I'm just doing what God asked me to do. And this is after my heart too, to marry this woman. And I know he will take care of me. Seek first the things of God and all else will be added to you. You know, in Ephesians chapter five, Getting a husband and a wife is something God wants you to do in order to live a righteous life. And you know, once you make that step, he's going to fix it. He's going to make sure it happens. Why? Because it's something he loves. Do you understand? So we stress that we got married, we got engaged one year. The next year is coming up on our marriage. And my wife was worried a little bit. I was worried a little bit, but I like, don't worry about it. God has this. Well, probably two weeks before the marriage, our church said, hey, we can have a ceremony at our church for free. We will provide everything, food and everything. Mm, wow, we worried. My boss just happened to throw me a little lump sum out of nowhere. What? Don't worry about clothes. Guess what? We didn't make nam preparation for our marriage until it was time to be married. God is an on time God, and God will provide. And if you're doing the things that are pleasing to God, He's got to make it happen. Because why? Because you seek first heavenly things, and all else will be added to you. Am I saying me and my wife were perfect? We didn't argue, we didn't fight, we didn't fight. We had a few brawls. <laughs> yes we did but God had a plan and he said I know the thoughts I have towards you thoughts of peace and to give you a perspective in right so just lean not on your own understanding and I always acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path who says that the word says it the word says don't worry about food or drink wow amazing God provided I'm not saying that to toot my horn. I'm saying it to toot God's horn. Because he did exactly what he said on my heart to say. He did it. Not because I made it happen. Because it was part of his plan. I didn't speak it into existence. I, I made, I was obedient to the Lord. And said, I'm going to get married. <laughs> and the Lord made it so I can get married. And guess what? Ever since we've been married, we've been going through hell and high water. That's why he said, hey. 
sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. All kind of weapons been coming against me and my wife. Sometimes in the form of Houston Beard. Sometimes in the form of Michelle Beard. Sometimes in the form of a family member. Sometimes in the form of a friend. It doesn't matter, but you know what? Sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. If you faint not, everything's gonna work out fine. Then you read further on in Ephesians chapter five, you move over to six, take on the armor of God. So you're going to be able to quench every fiery dart of the devil. It's one of the verse he said, take on faith. So you can quench every fiery dart of the devil. Believing in things yet not seen. That faith concept is going to make sure you get everything that God has planned for you. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to also stop the enemy. It's going to quench every fiery dart. That don't mean the dart might not be fired at your back. It might even hit your back. But God's going to wipe that dart out. He's going to wipe those arrows out. He's going to sustain what he promised. Right? If we faint not, if we stop worrying so much, if we lean not on our understanding, why is the Lord's prayer so powerful? Because it covers everything. It wasn't my understanding, if you remember. And one verse, when he asked, when he talked to the disciples, he like, Disciples, I mean the disciples came to Jesus. How shall we pray Lord? Teach me how to pray Okay, let me say it again Jesus didn't say it just one time. He said it more than once He go gave the same exact prayer again So if you think that the Lord's prayer is not powerful and it's not something that should be spoken out of your mouth every day You are wrong. Or you think your prayer better? No He told you what to pray he told you in the Sermon on the Mount, and he told his disciples privately, teach us how to pray. All right, you mentioned him in the first time. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Twice! <laughs> he told them how to pray Two times Wow and He repeated the exact same prayer hmm. And he said Listen man I pray Then when they asked him Pray like this Wow So the word of the Lord is true It's a shield It's good It's perfect How do you become perfect Taking heed to every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I command of you? I'm commanding you not to worry. What? The Lord commanded you not to worry. Am I saying you ain't going to worry? Just remember, when you start worrying, the Lord said no. Wow. It helps you. You worried about this. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to eat? How? Lean down on your understanding and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Our Father, which are living, hallowed be thy name. What? And all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What? And all your ways acknowledge him. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, first, heavenly thing, and all else will be added to you on earth. What? How do you get it right? Listening to what the word says. <laughs> it's very simple, but it's not. I'd be lying to you if I tell you I got it all figured out because I don't. That's why I read the Bible every day. Yeah, I take breaks. Let me, I'm just stop lying. Normally on the weekend, no, wait, 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 I still do. Every once in a while, the Lord might be like, hey, just rest today, I got you. Rest on my word that you've been reading and understanding. I got you today, because you've been faithful to me at least. Uh, guess what? I got you. I see what you do. I don't care if the world sees what you do or not, but I see it. And guess what, if I see it, 
there's nothing that can be done. And guess what? Nothing can be done anyway. Because you are a child of the Most High. You are a saint. You are a Christian. Wow. Wow. Take no thought. You know, we worry about everything. The enemy wants you to worry because it hurts your faith. Right? Right? Okay. What are you going to do today? I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to worry about tomorrow? Are you going to focus on today like the Lord says? Just take Christmas. Is that pain? Everybody worry about Christmas all year. They might have got everything they said they wanted to get. I didn't worry. How am I going to pay the bills? Well, some of the stuff you were worried about in the first place was irrelevant. Anyway, it's all good. Get it right this time. Get it right this time. You might not have got it right this year. Get it right next year. Get it right today. New Year's resolution. How about today resolution? Everyday resolution to grow better with Christ. Let me pause and I will continue.